Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Jurassic World Dominion. Maybe I should come up with a clever fake name. I'm going to say, off the bat, I think people are going to like it. But within five minutes, I was annoyed. Within 15 minutes, I didn't want to watch the movie anymore. And there's a point in the movie where I mistakenly hit my mouse and saw what, how much time was left. And I was just not enjoying this movie. Take that as you will. But I was in the mood. I was in a good mood. I was actually humming the Jurassic Park theme in my head. I went looking for it. I'll say from the beginning of the first Jurassic Park, amazing, I'm captivated. The two that continued back in the day, I kind of enjoy, but if someone was to sit with me, I can understand why they're not as good movies and maybe even labeled a bad movie, but you enjoy it anyway. Okay, so the first three Jurassic Parks, awesome in its own little capsule. When the first Jurassic World came out, whatever it was called, um, did they have names for these fucking movies? Jurassic World or whatever. I already could not give a shit. Something about the way the movie's made, and maybe it's this day and age's, you know, uh, formula for making movies or blockbusters. But I was not happy with it, interested in it. There seems to be too much bullshit in it. Great performances, let's say, on the uh, overall, maybe. You know, you look for those things in the movies. and But I want to be taken away to Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and just get immersed in it. And it didn't let me. The second one, I don't give a fuck about. It's just bullshit. Um, you know, I watch them, though, you know, and I try to go in, like I said, at least understanding my, mo my moods and what I'm actually feeling at the time. So, again, I was... In the mood to watch a Jurassic Park movie. I had it humming in my head. I kind of knew that there was going to be a reunion of the old characters in the movie. Awesome. But I can't come and do these podcasts and not be honest. Uh, this is just a, a mess of shitty setups and horrible chases and bad dilemmas it does have some charm and some you know um callbacks that you really find charming and endearing it's just gonna happen these are not like all bad actors and i said this before i don't think people go to make a bad movie but this movie is directed by colin trevorrow who i don't never fucking knew about i've kind of maybe heard the name and and he's in the credits as also screenplay and story. And when I went to do this, as I normally do, I'll, you know, get my thoughts on the movie, kind of jot a little outline down for the most part, and then go look at the IMDb and stuff like that. And, you know, that's if I'm prepared, because we know I'm, uh, you know, all my staff here, just, uh, you know, the pandemic, they're complaining. So, I find out that this Colin Trevorrow is, is not my cup of tea. Like, I don't give a shit. And I don't know how, you know, directors like this get put in these positions and get these big budget franchise movies. I mean, uh, what can this movie be? Two hours long, right? Two hours or something like that. I just watched a fucking fan film based on the Twin Peaks world. It was four hours long. Made by, oh man, I don't like to get the guy's name wrong, but um, Cameron Cloutier. I hope I said it right. And I loved it. Four hours. A four hour movie based on the myth and lore that I love. Twin Peaks. This is Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic Park. The first Jurassic Park is 
such a masterpiece in so many ways. What it did for everything, industry, whatever you want to talk about. There's just so much love and heart in it. And like I said, the other two, yeah, I mean, maybe I debate that one of them is a very well-made movie, just an engaging story, and we get into that. I don't like this movie. I don't like the way it's made. Um, I don't know if it's the background of, you know, noise of the internet and growing older, but there is something to say about this formula or whatever they're doing. And I don't agree with the fucking nonsense, the, you know, He-Man woman haters clubs out there that'll just fucking rail against Disney's uh, motives and whatever, female. I, I don't give a fuck about that. I care about the heart and soul put into a movie. I've said this. It takes so much to make a movie. An incredible amount of all these pieces coming together. And I got a friend, my friend Steven, who just does short movies and, you know, he's got a family and he's, Put one of these fuckers in charge of these movies. Can we fucking do that? Can I get a real interesting take from a newly, what do you call it, a rookie or an amateur director? Do I gotta get this fuckhead, Colin Trevorrow? Like, I'm looking, look, like, I don't understand his fucking movies. Fine. It's not for me. He does Jurassic World. It's fucking dull and just blah. You know, then there's Jurassic World, The Fallen Kingdom, which is fucking bad. I, I just don't like it. And then The Rise of Skywalker. He gets replaced as director by J.J. You know what? Now you can go fuck yourself. And by the way, I didn't know this when I was watching the movie. I did not know if Spielberg fucking came back and directed this movie. I had no clue. I had no information. I barely knew this movie was on my radar. Until I was in the mood to watch a Jurassic Park movie. And it was like, holy shit, isn't there a new one? in my fucking head and then it's like it's a fucking record play i wish i had sound effects right the record player stops five minutes into this movie where i'm like fuck this this is bullshit 15 minutes into the movie i'm fucking no i don't want to watch this movie and i know great things are coming up because actors are going to put their heart into it there's going to be great scenes in here there's going to be uh great chemistry from the old days or mixed in with the new Fine, but as a whole experience, I'm going on a ride. This ride is bullshit. <laughs> Everything from every setup. You know what? I'm going to say the best fucking performance is the little girl. Was she in the other ones? Or the other one, right? Because was it revealed in the second one? The clone girl? Ah, shit. Hmm. I'd like to get her name because she needs... uh props it's just a great little actress um isabella sermon as Maisie lockwood yeah i mean you got jeff goldblum lower dern you know they're all back sam neil and oh by the way okay because this is what is one of the most garish fucking problems with this movie all right remember the scientist bd wong <laughs> playing dr henry Wu? This guy nailed it in the original Jurassic Park, right? Confident, young, arrogant, whatever. Nailed it. And he's been almost a staple that you can remember, and you go, okay, you know, give a thumbs up. He tries to act in this movie with someone with regret and, and worries, and he wants to make things right. And I'm going to say, spoiler. It sucks. He's so bad at it. I don't know what the fuck they were doing with direction in this movie. I'm not here to shit on actors, too. Like I said, I'm not, no one wants to make a bad movie. But you've got this actor, B.D. Wong. He's amazing at what he does very well. You've got him in here with fucking long hair, trying to make him look like he's got regrets. And he's got to change something because the world's in danger and he really needs to do it. And throughout the whole movie, he's horrible. Horrible. Pulls me out of the movie. I don't believe anything. And how many core issues and, and plots are in this fucking movie that matter? Like, come on. This is just a, you know, it's a blockbuster put together fucking movie. I would keep Colin Trevorrow, whatever the fuck his name is, away from this shit. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't get it. 
I don't want to see this type of movie with franchises, and I can now kind of understand this, um, this idea on the internet about certain movies that come out and why people write, write or make four-hour podcasts breaking down why these movies, their formulas suck. And we're not talking about we need new uh, Quentin Tarantino's and David Lynch's. We need a criteria, a, you know, when you're judging art, it's all that subjective shit. But there is a criteria, there is an objectivity we can make out of this. Right? Yeah, and I get exploring experimental movies and stuff, and I just gave props to Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks fan film by Cameron Cloutier, I think. My friend Steven, who makes short little movies and he's interested in this stuff all his life. And it's not that friendship bond. Like, I don't even know who the fuck Cameron is and his podcast, Obnoxious and Anonymous and whatever, Queen of Hearts. He just came across it through my deep dives into Twin Peaks stuff. But I think there's an understanding, there's an instinct to this stuff that maybe gets honed in with schooling and maybe you can equate it to the graphic artist who does graffiti on the wall. And he's so good at it, but he never goes to school for it, right? He never learns. And he's amazing. And he, maybe he becomes famous. Maybe he's rich and famous off his art. And you got the guy who goes to school, right? He learns all the ins and outs, depth, perception, shading, whatever the fuck it is that you need to do. And it's this blend of what is in the fucking the mindset of the world at the time when movies come out. Where are we sitting? Like, what's... Is this the formula now just to placate and give out popcorn movie fun? If that's it, maybe this works. Maybe I'm just too cynical. Maybe, I don't know. But like I said, it, all evidence to me points to, no, this movie's very flawed in, in everything it does. I'm not sitting, I wanted to watch this movie. I'm, I'm in a good frame of mind, sort of. You know, like, I'm humming the fucking theme in my head. This is a bad sign for movie franchises and the companies that run them. I don't, you know, you can make your billions of dollars. Like, I don't care. And maybe that's the point, right? Has it always been like this? And, you know, uh, I like Halloween movies. I love them all. And I'll give, you know, make excuses for this. And then they come out with Halloween Kills and it's a fucking garbage best trailer for the next movie. With bad editing and cuts and janky shit all over the place. As much as I love them. And what they've tried to do for that franchise and bring it back. And Laurie Strode and getting the actors together. Whatever. This is getting the old guard back. Uh, acknowledging that. Remember when the first movies came out? Was did Jurassic Park really happen? Is this a reboot? And then they start revealing that no. There are exact um, moments in the movie they reference it it was a little thing that came out in the beginning when these movies first came out the new whatever you're calling them so that argument was there and now we know you know Jurassic Park happened it was a real place it exists in the history the second movie happened there's little jokes about it right fine and you want to bring that love and that um, endearment that attachment we have to those movies and and Hit it home with this third in this trilogy. Like, where will we go from here? Right? Oh, well, maybe we'll end this thing here. On every level, for me, it doesn't work. I've seen fucking dinosaurs. I've seen this bullshit fucking motorcycle rides and fucking chases. Like, it's just bullshit. And it kind of, it fucking annoys me in a way. This is not, like, enjoyment for me. I'm going to rather go watch some old stuff and just, you know, is nostalgia the answer? You know, psychology, I think nostalgia uh, cures, like, not cures. See, that's a bad one. I'm just riffing here, stone. But, you know, it helps with loneliness and certain things, right? So you're trying to blend that, and this guy is just not good at it. I don't know who Colin Trevorrow is. Has he fucking done, like, maybe TV and stuff, right? Um, it's just don't, I just don't know. Why is this part of the fucking staple of how things are done? 
And for the most part, I've always ignored this trend in YouTube and stuff or internet and this method of shitting on movies for, you know, just the fact of things like this. And I really didn't see the total point of that. And like on my channel, my most viewed fucking video is me shitting on the Batman movie. But I don't see me making videos every week. With, with fucking funny titles to gain those numbers again. Because that's not my goal. I don't want to come and shit on fucking movies. I want to talk about how much fun. This is always a, like a therapy for me. This is always getting and like maybe one day when I'm gone and people look back and like this is the stuff he like. Oh, listen to his take on the thing you know, or Escape from New York. My love of John Carpenter and you know where it was a misstep here. And oh, no, this is like. I don't want to, you know, just eviscerate fucking movies. Like, Chris Pratt is garbage. Like, I can't take it. And that's not to say I don't love him in Guardians or something, but I don't want to see this fucking guy who's just going to be from the Navy and with knife fights and stuff. No. You know, that's not what they did. And you're trying to build this guy. Remember the other movie? He takes, like, fucking armed guards out with machine guns or something. Like, no. I don't give a fuck. Train your raptors. Be a goofy fucking idiot. This is not like um, John Wick is a fucking uh, dinosaur wrangler. Yeah, that's right. These fucking horses and a fucking la and a rope lasso shit. So let me stop it. How many times are you going to get on a motorcycle? Fucking just, you know, yeah, let's bring back Blue and have this fucking subplot thing and sure. Part of the thing, I get it, right, you know, what did someone say, uh, Blue is the Iron Man of <laughs> the Jurassic Park world, like, this is, I don't like this movie making, I don't, and maybe it's what is there now, maybe it's just what catches the attention of pandemic, post-pandemic, you know, world, um, we crave these things, I mean, I'll never have a bad feeling about Star Wars The Phantom Menace because of my uh, my engagement going to the movie theater with lightsabers and having battles outside and going inside and there were other people like having lightsabers. It was such an experience. It was magic. It was beautiful. But I'll sit home and agree with people how what a fucking mistake it was and letting George Lucas direct these fucking movies. And yeah, I'll pull out the things I love and whatever. But this doesn't even feel like that. This doesn't feel like someone's vision of love. Like Colin Trevorrow comes to fucking... Whoever you want to call it, WB, what is it now? I, I don't even know, right? Who has the company? Uh, whatever. And listen, this guy really wants to make a Jurassic Park movie. Let's bring it back and we give him Jurassic World. And it's like just a shitty action movie. All the beats, all the love, all the heart. Just it doesn't, it's not there. And get it. It's not for me. There's people out there who will argue with me. I, get, I understand that, too. And now, sitting here, maybe the movie makes $4 billion. And uh, I'm in the minority of this shit. Like, hey, I'm getting that old, cynical-type fucking mindset. And I like to think, you know, I'm susceptible to anything. But um, I'm just sometimes disappointed in the fact of a missed opportunity. Maybe it's more of that, like... Alright, the Star Wars movie, so I gave The Force Awakens a pass, and maybe I gave Jurassic World a pass, that it's, it's, you know, new iteration, and, you know, guys on motorcycles running with fucking raptors and stuff, what was that, the second one? Anyway, fine, like, I'm gonna give it a shot, I'm gonna be open-minded, I'm gonna watch it, and try to differentiate my love for it, and emotional-wise, and trying to be somebody who says, now, this is a badly made movie, um... Someone just made a comment on my Batman movie. Like, how the fuck could you say The Dark Knight Rises is a bad movie? Because it fucking is. It's horrible. It's garbage. Doesn't mean you can't like it. I talked about me liking bad movies, but I'm going to sit here and eat it when someone who's gone through the fucking movie and has given me points to ponder and consider and, you know, facts about things and... I'm going to have to, you know, eat it and accept the truth. All right, so I like a bad fucking movie. 
but I can't get around this movie in even that sense. Like, um, again, do I foresee want want to watch this movie? No fucking way. And even with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum, they don't make me want to watch this movie again. And I'm going to be honest, I don't care how bad those movies were, I watched the first trilogy and still watched the second two movies. You know, and yeah, that's nostalgia maybe, but isn't that what they're doing here? Isn't the reason why Sam Neill, Laura Dern, is to bring that nostalgia back and maybe give the fans what they wanted to bring the heart back into it? People complain about the new Star Trek that way. It's too visceral and, and, you know, edgy and woke and, you know, it's violence and it's not Star, it's not Federation. I kind of agree. But I've said in those pockets, maybe this isn't my Star Trek right now. This is the era we're living in and I'm a little more old school with the goofy stuff and, you know, people with a remote control moving Spock around, controlling his brain functions. Like, fuck is that nonsense? But there's that balance for me. I want to come in with an open mind. I want to enjoy a movie. I want to be taken away. And yes, maybe I wanted my expectations to be that of the first Jurassic Park series. And this doesn't do it for me. I don't feel it. And when I recommend a movie like this, I'm, you know, I sometimes hesitate and go, look, did you like the first two? You like Chris Pratt as this fucking movie? Fine. You're going to maybe enjoy this movie. There's a new person who comes out of nowhere beautiful good actress like I, there's no depth in I don't know what the fuck is going on but make sure you get Sam Nail in here write this nonsense for Jeff Goldblum and his fucking antics in this company get one of the worst antagonists ever and try to you know make it semi real oh this is a you know this is just one of those villains you know I, you know the fucking T-Rex, is he's got to be this fucking superhero at the end, in a way, you know. Let's get the big thing, biting the thing out of the water. You know, hit all these marks and bring in these old people and we're going to, we're going to cap, we're going to bring the magic back. And I think it fails. That's kind of where this is going. Is it a uh, shit on movie? No, like, I, I don't, I don't see me, like, trying to just shit on this like um the batman the board man you know i don't see that i don't see the uh annoyance and anger of giving someone a shot at a real fucking beloved character or franchise and just shit in the bed i don't uh, you know i don't see that with this no i, I think people are gonna people are gonna enjoy it it's gonna be the popcorn movie in the trilogy that you know brings the heart back for them i, I get it but for me, this movie doesn't work on so many levels. I just, I'm just bored, unca- uh, you know, I'm not captivated by stuff. And you can't use the tricks anymore of the, oh, they're looking at wonderful, you know, and then have the character say it never gets old. No, it gets old. And it gets old because the formula is not good. It's not good for me. And again, this just could be an honest thing that I'm now in. The, I'm just in that mindset these days. Even going into something with an open mind and trying to understand it, are there factors I'm not realizing that um, you know, this is uh, fun. I did my uh, Thor: Love and Thunder, and in a way, I'm I don't want to see this fuck the goofy Thor no more. What fuck am I gonna complain that kids aren't gonna love this fucking movie? Ah, the power of thought at the end. You're fucking bonkers. But I'm going to admit that that's going to grab a fucking audience and they're going to ride that wave. It is what it is for what it wants to be. And they're not making excuses for it. They make fun of it. I think this movie is trying to do that and it doesn't work. This fucking, um, who's this chick who's doing, uh, some good stuff on, like, um, Oh, fuck. Bryce Dallas Howard, right? She's uh, Ron Howard's daughter. Um, she's fucking talented, and I got nothing against her acting, and obviously her stuff she's doing on other things, like directing and stuff. And maybe, okay, maybe these issues. 
with some things. Like, you know, you directed an episode I didn't particularly care for. Whatever. I mean, come on, you got Laura Dern. I mean, Jeff Goldblum, Sam Neill. I mean, Chris Pratt is like, I don't, I don't care. A fucking Navy veteran, you know, former, like, it just doesn't work. I'm sorry that he's so popular and stuff, and I get it. He's amazing as, you know, I love him in uh, Guardians, but I don't want to fucking see him in his movie. I don't want to see him in a fucking knife fight with somebody. Give me engaging, caring plots that have logic to them. You know, you're in the fucking, you're looking at these dailies or whatever the fuck it is, and you don't go, B.D. Wong, this isn't working. Let's just go straight fucking villain. Give him a fucking thin, twirly mustache. And make him the fucking villain of the whole franchise. His portrayal of uh, confident, smart, uh, uh, you know, experimentalist, and, you know, geneticist, and whatever the fucking scientist he is, it was amazing, it was believable, and it was captivating. And the times you get where he's uh, kind of, you know, wondering about things throughout that fucking trilogy or whatever, <clears throat> maybe people saw that that's where this was going, and they said, let's do it. But I'm sorry, just like the Phantom Menace, when you get these fucking dailies back, and you're watching these performances come over, you gotta, you gotta correct it, you gotta course correct immediately. This is a big part of this movie that I really can't stand. You've got this amazing little actress, and like I said, who, who the fuck is going to argue with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, like Bryce Dallas Howard? Like, these people are fucking good. These are, um, you know, they don't just like shit on their roles. I don't remember, you know, movies where I don't like and I can point out, oh, Laura Dern phoned it in. You know, even Sam Neill, he's been in some fucking same movies. Event Horizons, like one of my favorites. I want to be taken on a ride, and I want it to be, you know, believable in a sense. Even the logic of, it, of the world itself. Like, and I don't believe this with Chris Pratt running around. You know, um, this bond between humans and dinosaurs. Like, I'm not that... Captivated. I wasn't captivated by it when they first did it, and they had Donofero, whatever the fuck his name is, the Kingpin actor, in that movie playing sort of the, you know, you know, lackey henchman villain in a better sense that you didn't know what the fuck, who's, there's no villains in these movies type thing. You know, in the war machine. Like, who the fuck is going to put an army of raptors and use them? Stop it! And this movie fucking amplifies that. There's a fucking scene in this movie. Where five agents, whatever the fuck they are, with guns drawn, handheld, let's call them fucking Berettas, maybe a forty-five. I don't know. I didn't check every fucking caliber of weapon. But they're out there with their weapons drawn, and none of them has a snub nose fucking Beretta gun from 1960s and 1970s. Right? Their fucking weapons are drawn. This fucking awesome actress who plays one of the fucking antagonist in the movie like whatever the fuck she is uh, you, you got um some really great put like i love this actress i don't know what her name is and i don't know if they're gonna i'm gonna be able to find it fast enough but um she's like a spy chick anyway she's got this fucking thing and they're using the fucking laser will make them attack anything and kill them plot from what the second one Maybe even the first one, I don't know, like, the stupidity, right? I'm going to shine a laser on you, and the fucking raptor's going to know you're its target. And it's just so many, there's so much ridiculousness about this, just to begin with, right? They carry it fucking over, and you've got these five agents, or whatever the fuck it is, maybe it's four, whatever, whatever, because I don't care, and... They're looking at these boxes and the raptors come out, whatever, and the order's not given yet. Or the laser pointer has not been pointed yet. These five agents are confused. The raptors are like looking around confused. 
the fucking chick is able to do some bullshit hands behind the head nonsense, aim the fucking laser pointer, and all the raptors attack. In all this time and all the stretching of the film, no matter how they cut it or whatever, it is stupid and dumb and pulls me right out of the movie because kill the fucking raptors or whatever the fuck they are. If you don't kill them when they're confused because you feel fucking bad, when you see a laser pointer on you, stick together, you were in a formation, you were like right near each other's side, you would have fucking killed every raptor. These things aren't bulletproof. These things aren't super fucking things. They don't shoot laser beams and heat vision and have fucking skin of steel. Yes, there might be some you don't want to fucking shoot because you're just going to piss them off. And you don't want to get fucking trampled by an elephant-sized dinosaur that'll rip you apart with its fucking new fangled eight feet long claws that look ridiculous and maybe they're real fine I, I don't care but i'm talking about five agents or whatever the fuck they were i assume they knew what they were doing because they had fucking weapons they were trained in some way i have to assume that they're in a formation they're obviously together with their weapons drawn pointed these raptors come out confused because they don't have a laser pointer to direct them what to do. And even in, in that scenario, that's dangerous enough. I'm a fucking... Look, if, if it's this turmoil between shooting things, you don't want to kill these animals. I get it. But this is... It just looks stupid. You're not giving me enough to make me care that they don't want to... You know, oh, we only bring, you know, uh, sedative guns, whatever. Like, no. Kill the fucking things and kill the fucking chick. Because as much as I like her... She's popping up everywhere, surviving things, and for what fucking reason? She's wearing white, she's got this gadget, she's hijacking, kidnapping, she's just, you know, she's just like a, a number one henchman of the real villain, who's not even a fucking villain? He's just some angst-ridden older man who's thinks that fucking, you know, this genetic power is going to, I don't Give a fuck. It's not, it's not good. You put her in a position, shoot her. Kill her. And by the way, get one of these characters, kill one of them. Kill one of these characters. You can't have this fun, loving romp all the time. Alright, you don't have to kill the fucking main cast. Okay? But make someone have a sacrifice. In the fucking one of the, the first movie... Didn't fucking... Oh, well, he wasn't really well-known then. Didn't Sam Jackson, like, fucking die with a cigarette in his mouth? He was always smoking cigarettes in that movie, right? I don't know if people remember him. He's like a technician. You know, he's trying to uh, fix everything in his fucking arm. Anyway. Give me something more than this just generic garbage. Like, yeah, the village's gonna get eaten at the end, and a T-Rex is gonna show up. I, you wanna use this formula, and it invokes that thing? I get it. You gotta do it good. I don't think this is done good. I just don't. I don't like this formula. I don't like the way it's put together. This roller coaster ride that I'm supposed to enjoy. I'm just looking at my watch or looking over my shoulder. Like, please stop this fucking thing. Like, is, should that really be it? Especially when you're going in the mood for it. And you find yourself in a good place. Your friend gave you good news. Uh, you got a job or, you know, your other friend's helping you out and things are, you know... And I'm gonna come in. I wanna fucking be carried away and enjoy it. I don't wanna come in and shit on the movie, although it obviously gives me fucking views, right? And that's not all what it's all about. Yes, it's about the truth to me, and I'm gonna tell you what I think about a movie and go into it in that sense, but if that was the gimmick here every week I would just find shit to shit on. And I don't want that to be me. But I could see this is why a lot of channels get this type of hype or reputation. This is uh, not the first time. And you can see it like, and this might not be a good thing, but look at movies from the 50s where, you know, a man would turn around and slap a woman. And like, I know those times change and formulas change and the content of your movies is, um, you know, morphed in some way about the culture and the time we're living in. So I'm excited about science. I am a fucking geek. This ass 
people. Like, and I know everybody's gonna go ask me, but I'm a nerd, geek, sci fi nut, D and D, sci fi, everything you can imagine between horror. Doesn't take much. I've admitted I like the Green Lantern movie and I watch it a lot. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I'm a fucking fan, but I want to see Green Lanterns on screen. But I'm not going to argue the merits of the movie. And maybe someone's going to argue the merits of this movie. Uh, I get it. Um, it's just not me. And the reason why I'm going on so much about this is usually it's easy for me to distinguish. Hey, look, people are going to like this movie. It's just not for me. I'm finding this movie, like, annoying and i i can almost feel like it, i'm disrespected like because i hate that because i think disrespect and you know you disrespect you mean that's all garbage you know but i think that associating it with that feeling of you have such a missed opportunity that i'm mad like sam you got laura dern sam neil uh jeff goldblum i mean come on I don't, I don't get it with this movie, uh, this whole trilogy, um, and maybe, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, now I'm thinking about it, maybe it's the fact that I give the first one a pass, right, so can, can I look at it like this, uh, I give the first movie a pass and I equate it to The Force Awakens, right, because Daisy Ridley's fucking amazing in that movie and she's, oh my god, there's so much awesomeness in it, and then the other two movies come out, Garbage Fest, fucking insulting nonsense garbage and you, you feel like you invested and you gave it a shot i think that might be he happening here with me like now looking back the first jurassic world is bullshit garbage fun popcorn movie yes you know granted that because i'm not going to go back and really evaluate it again in that sense i'm just going you know riffing off this and is that why is it that i Gave this, even the second movie a shot and, you know, it didn't pay off. Um, that, uh, uh fuck, the uh, Twin Peaks director I was talking about, he had said something in one of his things like, um, you know, and this isn't total formula work, but he, he knows what he's kind of doing, you know, writer, director. Anyway, that you could start your movie pretty bad in the middle, but as, if you hit the ending, if you nail the ending of a movie, it's all forgiven and it works out. And it can even be even better with slow burns and movies that take a long time, right? That when you're getting to the end, if they can pull this off, it's going to be worth it. These movies just don't have that catch for me. I don't feel it in... Parts to part, if you call it the first act, the second act, the third act, even if I'm not supposed to be in that frame of mind because I fancy myself a writer or I write screenplays and things like that, and, uh, you know, for me, I see it a different way. Granting other methods and modes of experimental movie making and stuff, I don't hold this up in high regard. I find it a, a waste of opportunity for millions of dollars, Right? I, and I, you can say to me, Joe, you just touted a four-hour fucking Queen of Hearts Twin Peaks fan film. I watched it. Oh, it's made by an amateur. You can tell the camera. So the man raised twenty-five fucking thousand dollars. Okay, this isn't about that. You can see the love and the law and the talent that went into that. Well, how many millions make this movie? And I want to love the whole thing, and I want to give props to everybody. On like I said, I'm giving props to movies in general. Just for the magic of them being created. Go look at the credits of these fucking movies now. How many people? So of course I'm going to judge this Twin Peaks fan film differently. And I'm going to put it in the category. He's going to match the shots. But I'll tell you what. This fucking shots in this movie, Jurassic World Dominion, without a garbage pan shot that are trying to recapture the magic and they're just badly inserted barely put in the music cues are fucking horrible meanwhile i can't stop smiling watching the credits of the fucking twin peaks movie because it plays magic by olivia newton john 
know when to hit these marks and make this magic is not easy, I admit that. But this is a big franchise that captured the world. If you're not from this age, go back and try to remember Jurassic Park, the first movie. Like, there's a picture of Steven Spielberg with a Triceratops that's sick in the movie on the ground, and people went on crazy saying that he was hunting them like lions or something. Like, this is <coughs> wackiness. And the love I always get from watching behind the scenes and old things like the making of Jaws, the Exorcist, and, you know, go through any of the Coppola stuff. Or you know what I mean, David Lynch. I guarantee you, I will not find heart and love in any of those things associated with these type of movies. Maybe I'll get attached to a, someone's story in it. Um, aliens, right? There's uh, Sigourney Weaver. It's the one where she gets reincarnated. She's got like, acid blood and whatever. Now, though, that, I love the Aliens movies. But I gotta be honest about some of them, right? But I enjoy them. And there's a moment in the behind the scenes where she's on the basketball court and she throws it over her shoulder and the basket goes in. She did it in one take. The whole fucking day had to cut and trim the scene because everybody started cursing and going, get the fuck out of here. I get goosebumps from that moment in the behind the scenes stuff. Sigourney so Weaver gets on because they're filming. She turns her back and throws the basketball over her shoulder and it goes in. And you can see the reaction of the people around them. Is this movie, are these movies going to have those moments? And again, you can go and you could probably argue to me how bad that movie was, that Aliens movie. Right? And I might, maybe I'll have to agree with you. But I'm going to tell you that my, of my fun factor in it and the beats it did right that carried me through to the end. These setups, these scenarios are garbage in these movies. The running, the fucking motorcycle chase bullshit, the capturing the dinosaurs and weird backgrounds that they, you know don't matter like you've got to change this you got to change it up you got to keep me engaged and then this movie doesn't do it so i guess this is a rant in that sense but jurassic world dominion a missed opportunity but i bet a lot of people are gonna you know like me with green light like hey i enjoyed it what the fuck are you talking about fun to the end got to see my old characters come in oh fine to me, it's a missed opportunity that is starting to annoy me as a trend, maybe. But I went in with good, you know, intentions, good mind frame. I don't know what else I can do as a viewer. What job do I have to do to be engaged and enjoy these movies? I don't think a lot. I'm a fucking nerd geek. Irreverent sometimes, and I barely take life seriously in that sense. I'm easy to please. Uh, I think that'll be it for this week. Jurassic Park, Dominion, missed opportunity, doesn't nail it. But you know what? I could probably see him doing well and people enjoying the movie. So the fuck do I know? Hope everybody's doing good. My best to you and yours. Laters.